Sure. Ten. Nine. Ignition sequence start. Six. Five. Four. Three. Six. Welcome to the Alien Probe Podcast. It's Saturday, August 3rd, 2024. I'm joined today by Matt, hey. Mufon Matt, and Johnny Simonello, the, hey. the famous. The famous. <laughs> you know, where are you? How are you doing, Johnny? What's going infamous, on? Infamous, actually. Yeah, infamous. yeah. I'm, doing, I, I, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good. Actually, my one of my handles is Johnny Too Bad. So, so that's, <laughs> that's good. I mean, friends have tried to change that for years because no, no, Johnny, you're not. But it's stuck. So that's that's my. <laughs> thing. I like that. Where are you? Yeah. What room are you in? That's interesting. Uh, I'm in Los Angeles uh, right now, and uh, this is a kind of a studio space we have here in, in L.A. Nice. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. That's where I grew up. Uh, pretty much uh, a, a local Italian family, Italian Irish. Uh, you know, it was a little sleepy mafia town on the ocean there. Uh, you know. nice. um, so I grew up there with uh, five brothers and sisters, and uh, you know, I, I kept dream wondering how the hell am I ever going to get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a kid, because I, I didn't want to take the train into the city. I didn't want I couldn't see myself being there. I had no idea, uh, you know, how that was going to work. And then uh, the draft came along, you know, and, and the Vietnam War was happening in 1970 area. I had turned 18 and I didn't know what the hell was going to happen. I didn't have the college thing going. I didn't have any deferment. So I went into the and the night before I stayed up and I did every drug I knew just to mess myself up. So, <laughs> That's I, and just so, I, so I could go in and... Uh, you know, and maybe be rejected on those grounds, and uh, they weren't going for it. So I finally met with the psychiatrist, and I said, "Look, this is what I'm into. I just went recently went to the concert for Bangladesh. I said I was really inspired me. I've been to the UN a few times. I, I I've tried to create some peaceful motion in my life, and and I said, look, why uh, if you draft me, I'm gonna run, and then you're gonna have to find me. You're gonna have to lock me up. You're gonna have to put me in jail again. And I says. I said, so why waste uh, your time, our money, and my life? Uh, and the psychiatrist said, don't worry, you're not going anywhere. And uh, I said, no, I'm serious, man. <laughs> and so he get, he granted me a 4F status uh, based on my conversation, which I, I left the room and kissed the ground and wow. said thank you, Dad. And, uh it's and too, that, uh, too yeah. bad more people didn't know about that. Right. That's pretty easy. Well, I don't know what, how it just has a great. I don't I, I call it grace. I, I, my life, there's been this magic or grace that has allowed me, um, you know, for example, when I was a kid hanging out in Brooklyn, uh, we had, I didn't drive, but we bought this Jaguar Mark 9, which was like a, looked like a Rolls Royce. It was a large Jaguar. And for some reason, they were available for cheap. So we bought it. We drove around in the neighborhood. The cops thought we were drug dealers. They were following us <laughs> around, uh, photographing us. So then one day, my <laughs> father calls us in. And he goes, hey. He goes, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you kids know it, but my friend, the DA, called me the other day, and he said that uh, you guys are being followed and investigated. Whatever you're doing, you should stop. And we went, what? I have no idea what was happening. We had no idea. So we, we just chilled. And then two weeks later, the front page of both New York newspapers raided my neighborhood, and they took people <laughs> out of the house in the middle of the night and took them to jail. And uh, uh, and we, we, we escaped that uh, for some reason. So they in this this Passover over me that has allowed me to, and then shortly thereafter, I met my uh, spiritual teacher in 1972, uh, which Prem Rawat, and, uh, uh, and when I met this guy, I was at a jam session, and uh, this guy was talking, and I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, I was going, man, I don't, and so he's leaving, and I look to my left and my right, and there's a kid I'd known since four, I was four years old, and another guy since junior high, 
And I looked at both of them and I said, you know, I may know these guys another year or two, but whatever this guy is into, I said, there's something about him. So I followed him down to his car because I never thought I'd see him again. And I said, man, I don't know what you're into, but I think I'm into the same thing. <laughs> and that's when he told me the guy's name. He goes, oh, that's guru so-and-so. And I went, oh, my God. My mind reeled like you're driving that 90 and you hit the clutch and the engine roars. That's what happened in my head. And I said, uh, okay, John, there's two things you know. One is you don't know, and the other is you want to know. And whatever the fuck this guy's talking about, you know this already. So I said, okay, what do I got to do? And uh, and that's how I got met my teacher. And uh, and it was some it was beautiful because it was something I was looking for in my life uh, a, a connection that I. And all these things. I said, if it existed, I wanted to know it, and somehow I already knew it. And this was just a a, a source that allowed me to see myself and reconnect with something that was already innate and a part of me, which has been a part of my life till this very moment today. Wow. So that's a little brief history up to 1972. <laughs> the 70s. Then I don't. I always, I always tell my kids, you missed out. The 70s were the right? greatest. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> The music, the, the 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 substances that were available that were yes. amazing as well. Um, yeah, so pot now is like a psychedelic drug. It's, it's a completely but different it's way. Pot. Marijuana is yeah. like today oh, yeah. it's like a psychedelic <laughs> drug. <It's> yeah, <laughs> but it's nothing. It's nothing like orange barrel sunshine. Right. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Um, so. So to answer the question, how I how was I ever going to get out of New York? Shortly after meeting this teacher, uh, there was a trip to India where all these uh, people from Europe and, and Asia and the U.S. were going to India for this event in um, New Delhi. And uh, I didn't and I was with my friends and I said, look, one of us should go to represent to find out what's going. We had just gotten involved. I said, let's fuck. None of them could go. I didn't have the money, and uh, and then my mom gave me the first half of the money to go, and I and then I went to the airport, and every night, if people were leaving at the airport, and kids, other people came up, have you got enough money, John? I go, no, here, wait here, and they come back and hand me money and hand me. Eventually, I wound up in India, <laughs> nice. and that's how I got out of New York. And the next thing you know, I'm traveling all over the world from wow. there. Wow, it's amazing. What yeah. what places have you been? What's uh well uh. I've I've been to Australia, New Zealand, uh, Europe. Uh, I haven't made it to Thailand yet. My friends keep inviting me to come there. Um, I lived all over the United States. I've lived in Florida, Miami, and uh, San Antonio, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Denver, Colorado. Okay. Uh, it partially, when I got involved in the uh, meditation. I started to get involved in the organization, and 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 first uh, in New York City, I got uh, at, given a position uh, of an area they were developing called World Welfare Association, which is a social service network. So I became the director of that program at the age of 20, and yeah. uh, I started meeting with uh, hospitals and prisoners. And I went into Willowbrook after uh, Geraldo Rivera went in. And I used to bring bands and volunteers in. So we'd bring live bands in and, and volunteers that would come and they'd dance with the patients at Willowbrook. Uh, then I'd bring them into Rikers Island. Uh, I'd go to uh, Creedmoor State, cancer wards. I'd, I'd bring in uh, volunteers and just people that would play music. And it wasn't really, we weren't really proselytizing because I, I didn't really get that aspect of the, I just was bringing kind of good vibrations and, and love and, 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 people that want to bring that with us. And some of the musicians that showed up were really incredible. There was this one guy, we wheeled a piano around through the ward and he played the best boogie woogie <laughs> piano I ever heard in my life. Right. That's awesome. In yeah. the ward, that's pretty good. Rikers Island, I mean, you did you interview some of the people that were there? Uh, we went in there to play. Well, it wasn't like that situation. They, we brought, I brought two bands into Rikers on two occasions, uh, just for, and then we did, uh, uh, so we didn't really interact is more than that right. with, the, uh, with the clientele. Too bad, too bad it's got a really dark history. It does. Yeah, and then we did uh, band shells in the in the parks. I did like I, I used the uh, Prospects Park and in uh, Harlem. We went in there and we did clothing giveaways and and food. So part of this effort. So I I was managing and creating. I was I was able to create all these programs. I had no supervisor. I was the guy. So I have I was given an opportunity to imagine. 
a lot of things. And then it went, uh, and then they, uh, I became a part of their security team and traveled around the world doing uh, advance work and stage. Uh, audience was my area, pretty much. The largest audience I was involved with was 20,000 people in Kissimmee, Florida wow. for a seven day event out in wow. the open there. So I had a, I had a, a screen, 400 people for for positions and ushering and all that stuff, right, security wow. ushering. Right. So I set up systems to do that. I, I chose five or six people to uh, interview and then they would choose people of their interviews that then I would interview and I created a system. So it was really great. I was making things up as I went along. It was a lot of fun. Right. Oh, that is awesome. How long did you do that for? Uh, I did the security stuff for uh, maybe seven years. Seven years. That's good. And then I lived in ashrams. I lived in an ashram on and off for over seven or eight years, and mm -hmm. also as a part of my journey. Um, then uh, in the course, I met this group of people that from this group movement that were gypsies kind of people that were dancing in Europe, all over Europe in the 70s, performing and traveling to India. And I wound up living in South Pasadena with them in a house and we had we we did all kinds of performances there later stage we had a little amphitheater in the back we had an, a green and green which is an old eight, 1900 house beautiful architect with a two houses joined on a hillside so we put a stage in the back used to host two three hundred people did wow. live music did theater did dance it was a big dance community fashion also so we did fashion and dance our best show we did was in 1980 Tim Leary, Tim Leary was the MC. And oh, wow. uh, Manhattan, Manhattan Transfer was the lead band in the B-52. Was the B-52s there? Yeah, they were. And we did a fashion uh, dance uh, piece called Cocktails on Mars and Space Clones. <laughs> and it was, it was really very That's trippy, great. very far out. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you play the guitar too? Uh, I am. I fiddle. I, I got a piano and a, I got a bass and a guitar and I'm trying to... I'm, I, I've I've taught myself how to build websites. I've I've shoot video. I've done uh, uh, lighting. So I thought when I had a camera, for example, that would be oh I got a camera now I can make videos. Then I realized there's a thing called lighting and there's a thing <laughs> called sound. Right. And then you have to. And then because I like to do be in front of the camera, I've had a lot of experience in front of the camera. So. I was able to bring some of that to behind the camera and behind the camera to the front of the camera. So it was really interesting. But I, I've taught myself whatever I wanted to learn uh, and do. And uh, I got into computers early uh, when Mac first came out because I knew it was going to be important to get come up to speed on that. So I started, you know, immediately like getting involved with the technology. Yeah. Do you like Mac? Um, do you like Mac over PC, Johnny? What's your well, I had both at one point because I wanted to learn both, you know. But <laughs> I, I, in the end, they they looked similar in a way uh, with the the because the uh, what do you call it the operating system that uh, Microsoft picked up later look, was similar to Macintosh with the icons and all that stuff. But eventually, I just I, I stayed with Macintosh, which I'm pissed off with Apple because for clients that have been a part of their company for many years, you think you would get a discount every time you bought a new product in their line because you have their phones and you have their laptops yeah and over the years i, I you know i've gone through their equipment you think oh you're an existing customer you should get this something break. oh no yeah. no probably pay more <laughs> yeah and, they, uh, i'm not a mac fan i mean we're doing pc i've got pc in one room and mac in another oh, and yeah. i just mac i needed you can't do sound unless you import the shiny white box application or something similar it's weird yeah you know, yeah. so I dumped it. So it, I still have it. I've got, you know, I've got the box. I got the Mac Mini. I paid a million dollars for, you know, <laughs> and it's like I don't even use it. I mean, you can X out of the screen on the little red dot instead of the X. I don't know. I'll get it eventually, I suppose. <laughs> I just prefer PC. Yeah. So, uh, so when I lived in Malibu, for example, uh, first arrived in Malibu. I left. I left the ashram in Texas. Drove cross country with some friends. Landed in Malibu. And Bob Dylan was living across the street from us where we oh, landed. Wow. And we were, so nice. that was kind of cool, being right next to one of your uh, yeah, icons of your life. And then, uh, so I created a company at that point in, when I lived in Malibu called the Malibu Labor Pool. And because it was all these people from the meditation that I got involved that were coming in from all over the world because the teacher lived in Malibu, they were showing up, just showing up. So I created a company which did landscaping, maid services, carpentry, masonry. I had the whole mishpuka, as they say, covered. 
<laughs> and I used all these people that came in, and I created this beautiful little company called Mal, which there was nothing like it at the time. But I was living in the ashram there in Malibu, so I didn't own it. That was my problem. I never owned it. You didn't own anything. So right. I built this company up, and then in, in the end, somebody came along, and I got moved out <gasps> my own company oh, <laughs> and transferred great. someplace else. <laughs> wow. And then the company failed. And then, uh, But it was like it's, – it's interesting because having those experiences uh, – then uh, let's see what happened. Uh, I've, I've always been interested in, in the occult, uh, it being astrology, uh, spirituality, psychics. All of my girlfriends have been intuitives and psychics. I, 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 I've always been attracted to them for some reason. Right. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in, in retrospect. <laughs> you, you can't get away with anything. Yeah. Though, you know, <laughs> I, mean, you know um, I met a girl one time. This is how it is for me. I, I, I'd, meet, I'd meet somebody and I recognize, like same with my teacher, where I recognized something about this guy who was talking that I knew. So I'd meet a woman, and and I'd I'd recognize something about it. And so this is one instance. I'm at the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles, and I'm sitting in the lobby of the hotel, and we're chatting a bunch of people. And this one girl I've liked, and we're talking and talking. So I, I said, you know, hey, you know. Uh, I don't date, I mate. And she went, what? <laughs> because I got to remember that line. I don't, I don't know about dating. You know what I, mean? I don't know if that's a good line or not. <laughs> she she ran know. away. And I was like, what? So that line works in the 70s, though, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the way it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just hooking right up. Oh, yeah. Um, so what? So you know, I, like I was interested in the uh, the uh, Barbara Marciniak, the Palladian agenda, stuff like that. I, I got into. Uh, I, I could see that there was something that made sense about the gene genealogy, and there was a book called uh, Earth, I think, in a series of those books that got into the whole genetics and the reptilians and the uh, the and how uh, we're librarians and all the um, all life forms on earth are holding code and information and i found that all fascinating yeah. and uh i remember i was with a girlfriend at a, a hot springs one time and i was talking to this insect <laughs> and i was asking it to release the codes and she's looking at me like what the fuck Daddy? they won't um, tell damn insects won't tell you either. yeah not in front of women <laughs> they don't tell you nothing in front of a chick so then I, I adore, life goes on. I'm just jumping ahead now. And then yeah. I, I was living in, uh, um, where was I? I don't even remember where I was. I, I found out. Uh, so all my life, I've struggled with this issue of, of this femininity issue in myself. And I've always realized also in my course of my life, we're living in the divine feminine period right now and, and the goddess and all that stuff. And I, I've always recognized it. And I used to do a thing called the Full Moon Club for many years where I took people out to Joshua Tree the National Park. Uh, started. I was taken there once and I was so blown away I kept bringing people back to the point where I brought hundreds of people at a time sometimes just to come and walk and stay in the hot springs and then do mushrooms or acid or whatever and we'd wander around for three or four days out oh, there. Yeah. Uh, but right. the moon, the moon, the feminine and all that. And so... Yeah. And then I struggled with it since I was a teenager because I had bouts with like putting on women's clothes and I didn't understand it, right? right. So eventually in my 60s, I, I was living in uh, Lancaster and I looked in the mirror and I said, okay, whoever you are, whatever the fuck this is, you've yeah. got the floor. I, I need to process it because it became distorted because of my uh, not, uh, not inability to acknowledge or deal with it, I, I suppressed it. Right. And it manifested in different ways from because it, as more of a fetish in the suppression. And so the day I decided to let it out, I, uh, and how it happened was I was talking to this girlfriend who I met who was channeling dragons and uh, other uh, uh, mercurials, she called them, that uh, told me, look, you should tell somebody about this proclivity you have because, you know, it can make you sick. Now, this is way before I found out I had cancer. So I said, uh, okay, uh, tell a girlfriend, tell somebody about it. So my, happened to, my laptop happened to be open. And uh, so what I did is I, uh, I go on the Facebook and I, I write to every – I said, so look, if next time you see me, I look different, this is what's happening. And I had like at the time a 1,000 friends or something. They goes like, oh, my God, nobody knew. They go, like, what? You know? So the next day I went out for the first time in my life in that mode. 
and I felt like a huge weight was lifted off of me. Yeah. Tremendous. And I go to the market and these two young black boys are in the market and they look at me and and this is my biggest fear, of course, would be this, what happened next. And they're pointing at me oh. and they're going, gay, gay, gay. Oh, wow. And I'm like, I just looked at them and smiled and laughed and 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 it was that was it. But yeah. it was like where I thought I might have crawled back into the shell and never come out. They didn't. So, that was, I, they began there, and so I started to try to reach out and find community. I wound up going to the Los Angeles LGBT Center, and upon walking in, I'm greeted by somebody who goes, oh, how do you identify? Are you a he, she, they, them? Are you just gender nonconforming? And I went, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? And I started thinking about it, and I went, oh, my God, I could be a them. Now, yeah. can you imagine my shark and horror? Because I've blamed them for everything my whole life. Right. You know, yeah. it's their fault. You know, so yeah. now I'm one of them. And uh, so, and so I heard about this comedy workshop. You know, where how to relieve stress and trauma in your life through comedy. Because after coming out, which I'm glad I did when I did in 2013. Uh, Shortly thereafter, I found out I had cancer, stage four melanoma. Oh, right. So I was like, oh, shit, you know. So I took this workshop, and they, and so uh, they, I, like, one of those things was like what I just told you, the pronoun thing, my medical journey, how cancer, you know, I was, I was w fine until I got health care. That's why I say Obamacare gave me cancer, because I had no idea. There was nothing yeah. wrong with me until, <laughs> until, until Obama I got Obama came in. <laughs> um, so uh, life went on, and then uh, one day I did. Uh, my, I'd be laying there with cancer, and my roommates would go. So when I get up to go to the market, I'd put makeup on and get dressed, and I'm going out to the market. And they're going, "What are you doing, John?" Because I've been in bed all week. And they go, "Like I got to go to the store." And they go, "But John," and I go, "Look, I, I'm going out." So, but then COVID came. And while COVID came, uh, the masks, not going out, I wasn't dressing, I wasn't wearing makeup, I wasn't doing any of that stuff. And then one day I fell and fractured my hip and I found right. myself in the hospital. After a few days, I looked at myself and I said, oh, I remember you. And after eight years of living as a trans person, most more or less just expressing in a feminine way, uh, it was over. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. I didn't know, you, I didn't know it. Well, it's something that ended. I mean, I don't. Well, know I didn't know either. I had no idea. But <laughs> I thought that's just the way you kind of do it. But it, it was something that, for me, was a struggle, and I needed to address it and deal with it, and and I did, and in a way, and I don't know if it wasn't for COVID, if it wouldn't still, I'd still be presenting like that or right. not. COVID kind of created this situation where I had gotten what I needed from exploring that expression for myself and then so the cancer trip happened i i was like really sick and they gave me a drug trial uh because i said to myself i said look i could if i decide to drink orange juice and stand on one leg that would be my cure you know what i mean but i decided <coughs> to go with science and this brilliant german guy i met offered me this drug trial and uh at first it looked like i wasn't going to make it and they sent me to the hospital and threw their hands up and said okay and in the hospital i had an infection that got cleared up when I came out, they started the trial again. Within three weeks of starting the trial, I had my tumors in my neck and under my arms blew up. Oh, and I was wow. home and I was going, holy shit, what's going on? And I called the doctor and he goes, it's got to be Kaguchi syndrome. What do you think? I said, what? The? I don't what know. That? <laughs> and it was this Japanese doctor who developed, who dis discovered this thing called Kaguchi syndrome, which is where... Uh, your lymph glands, uh, everything in it gets killed and becomes necrotic and it just flushes it out. Now, for some reason, I had that response. And since 2017, my tumors are gone. The cancer is gone. Wow. And, oh, good. Uh, Very I'm good. I'm still being screened. So that was another grace or miracle in my life, yeah, which yeah. just moved along. Um, so then I got into television a little bit, started doing some background acting. I was on the show Community for a number of episodes. Because a friend of mine worked on the show, I got to be on that. I got to be on Sunny in Philadelphia as hey. well. Matt, <laughs> Matt wants to talk about Sunny in Philadelphia. I want to talk about <laughs> Caitlin Olson. That's what I want to talk. Oh about. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my friend did like all the seasons. She she still does that show. She's nice. still with it. I got I got a Patty's T-shirt from the whole. You know. Oh, that's cool. very cool. Yeah. Uh, um, so and then you know I did my own video stuff and uh, but when I got sick, kind of. I stopped all that. Uh, then uh, I had to move because my friends that I were living with, they, were, they got married and they were selling their house. I didn't know where I was going to go. I was kind of like at a point where I didn't have, I wasn't working. I didn't really have any money. 
I didn't know what was going to happen to me. And uh, a girlfriend, an ex-girlfriend of mine, she knew about my situation. She told her roommate, you know, Johnny really needs to find a place. He knew of this place in Venice that I, uh, th this old 90-year-old man, the, uh, the person who was managing his estate wanted him to have a roommate. So I wound up meeting him. And when I met him, I was presenting feminine. Right. And I said, we had this conversation. I said, look, and, uh, and my friend Arnold, he is a 90, he's now 98. He was 92 when I met him. And he used to be a former muscle beach guy from Venice, from oh, the wow. old days, right. from the 50s. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, so I said, look, if this is OK with you, uh, I don't think we're going to have a problem. And he goes, I don't care. And I said, well, there's one other thing I've heard people Just complain about, about, about me. And I said, you know, that's that I, I tend to talk to myself and I oh. sometimes I'll burst out into song. And he goes, that's okay. I'm hard of hearing. So <laughs> <laughs> Perfect that, was six, that was six years ago. And uh, but then what happened, this is where I'm at right now in this story is that this guy, uh, his caretaker, trustee power of attorney, which is a person he just met uh, after his brother died, wound up uh, during COVID, he asked her, who should I contact if you should die before me? Because CNN, he was watching and everybody was dying and she was younger than him. He never thought that could happen. Now all of a sudden he's concerned, you know, she could die before me. Who do I contact about my estate? She wouldn't answer him. So after the third phone call, he comes to me, knocks on my door and he goes, listen, John, I need some help. Will you help me? And I said, okay, only if you're serious, because this woman's a nightmare and I really don't want to be involved with her. So he goes, no, I'm serious. So I says, your brother had a lawyer on the refrigerator who left you your estate. Why don't you call that woman? He did. He fired this lady. And that's when he found out she had his $2 million was gone. Oh, no. She stole all his money. Wow. She donated it to her charity. She'd been living on it. She sued other people with his money. Oh. We've been in court since 2020 trying to get any of his estate back. Uh, we're still in court. I was sued for being an elder finance for elder financial yeah. abuse by her when he fired her. And so I, I have no attorney because, again, I didn't have anybody. But I found him a contingency attorney. So he had some representation. But it's been four years. It looks like they've decided that she did rob him. But she has no money now. The money's all gone. The properties are all gone. Wow. She's living in one of them and declared bankruptcy now. And it's in foreclosure. So the money, the $800,000 she dumped into that property of his he may not see a penny of it. Wow. And whatever yeah. they do recover, the lawyers get 40% of. So it's of just, course. it's yeah. been insane. But uh, so that's where we're at. But um, the only thing that I could say about maybe pertinent to your uh, podcast or uh, what, do you, what do you call this thing? Is it a video <laughs> log or a blog, a blog, right? It's a blog, yeah, it's a blog. Yeah. Yeah. Word. Is, uh, it's I'm Johnny today. With... It's Johnny Simonello's show. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the takeover. Yeah, uh, look out, guys. That's uh, right. so, so behind me are some paintings I've done over the years while I was sick. Uh, I don't know if you can see any of them. Uh, I can grab one for you. Yeah, grab one. Yeah. Love to see it. That's a great room. Yeah. It is. Let's see this one here. Will you start auctioning these off? Oh, <laughs> hey, wow. That's great. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, that guy, I, this what I see, I'd done these drawings when I was sick. And then I couldn't paint or anything. So what I did oh, is I went cool. into Photoshop, right. scanned my drawings, and colorized them in Photoshop. That's awesome. Very nice. Man. Yeah. So there's several of them. The one that I think relates to your blog. <laughs> Is. Oh, don't. Do not fall. We, don't, we, don't we won't delete that. Yeah. <laughs> this, this guy, I like this that guy. Oh, that is awesome. That is badass. I like that. That is great. Yeah. And then another one of these guys. Nice. Very cool. So yeah. So I like. I, I'm a man. I like. I want to play music. I want to paint. I want to. You want to do it I all. Wanna, uh, You've done it all. Film. I want to act. I want. Somebody asked me, this girl I met recently, she goes, so, Johnny, what do you do? And I said, I do nothing. <laughs> and she goes, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do everything. Yes, yeah, you do everything. Yeah. So so I met this girl in 2012. 
she was uh, during the Year of the Dragon. I'm a Year of the Dragon, born Year of the Dragon. It was always, and it was like a big deal to me. Yeah, Year of the Dragon. Right. And uh, some a bunch of people at this event said, "You could you give this girl a ride? Can you give her a ride?" So I said, "Okay." So we went to the we we met and we started hanging out. And then she told me she was traveling around the world, uh, going to these different ley lines, and she was doing some channeling, and she was uh, channeling dragon energy, which were multidimensional beings. Uh, from the twelfth dimension, and the uh, and, she, and she started inviting me to participate in some of her channeling work. So during my relationship with her, I started s talking to uh, these entities, which she was channeling. One was called Blue Star, which was a dragon, and most of the time the conversations were to me in Blue Star. And then her, her father, which was called Silicon, which was the but the dragons came to adjust. What the the eleventh dimension, which she called the lizards, had done, where they had tricked us and kept us in a illusion. The lizards were the illusion, and she said that how it worked was with the multidimensional world was that you'd each dimension had certain gifts that it deposited in the other dimensions. So she said, for example, in our our current reality. Like the fifth dimension might have dropped whales into our, our into our reality, or that different gifts. But because the way the thing had been by the the reptilian, not the reptilians, the lizards, had hijacked, and so nothing was working. So there was this uh, work that was happening in 2012 where they were repairing what they called the clock, and there was three layers to these dimensions. You started in a 13 dimension, you would move around to different positions and come to consensus, and then you'd enter the 13th dimension. And you'd go to the next level, and then you'd do the same process till you came to the third level of multidimensionalism, wow. and then that she called it. That's when you bake the cake, and the thing would be set. So what they came to do was to reset the clock, reset the dimensions, so that we are now, according to this channeling that happened, everything's been adjusted, and we're now in this other phase. Nice. One of the things she told me that I found interesting was that. Human consciousness, and I made me think, because she said, like, human consciousness, is, we think it has to do with this body, human consciousness. It could be in any form. She says, let's say the environment changed so ra radically that we could not exist in this environment, that the consciousness could exist in, in worms in the volcanic undersea. So it's just to really, it opened my mind to embrace the fact that, you know, what I identify with as me or myself is really just an ether of sorts. It's not really the physicality of this body is just a container and a vehicle. Yeah. Um, but what I am in essence can be expressed in any way or even I probably that's why they talk about transcending the body and in, in, into an eternal conscious state because you're not really the body, you know? So I think part of my understanding of life is it's a journey to reconnect to source and then become infinite in that respect uh, with owning owning your consciousness. I don't know what it looks like after this, but I know while you're in it, you can, it's like, I don't know, people say stop and smell the roses, right? But I used to say, it, you know, you have to be able to see the roses first before you can even think about smelling them. So mm -hmm. I spend my time looking to see the beauty that surrounds me and have the gratitude for the reasons that, I've been given this next chapter of life since I was yeah. on the way out, you know, so I'm very grateful to be here. Yeah, they, there's a theory that we're just a container with a soul in it. And then that I've interviewed a couple of people about the afterlife and what happens and your elevations and the different dimensions and things. And I think it's a very interesting concept and it keeps getting more and more to the forefront of yeah. the discussion. Really? Well, my one, my girlfriend that uh, recommended me to live here, she was brutally attacked at one point. A guy like grabbed her, tried to ra who knows what he was doing. She was leaving a, a rainforest event she was at and came to her car. This guy grabbed her, eventually grabbed her by her hair and just started pounding on her face. He broke every bone in her oh, face. Her nose was Christ. disconnected from her skull, blah, oh. blah, blah, left her there. She managed to drive herself to the hospital. Her keys weren't even, she reached to the ground and found them. She saw her glitter, picked it up. She could barely see blood everywhere. Nice. Phone didn't work. Drove herself to the hospital. Uh, she passed away. I helped, did fundraisers for her. I did my first GoFundMe, raised some money for her so she could survive. Several yeah. years of struggling with multiple surgeries. Her eyes were in different, they had to move her eyes, build her oh, whole oh, man. Many surgeries. She was in the program. She was a 12-stepper. She had to take all these drugs. To, she, it really messed with her. And eventually, 
this beautiful young woman wound up taking her own life. Oh, and man, man. Uh, my friend, her roommate, he still communicates with her. She, no, she, wow, she, really? she talks to him all the time. He has journals. He's written conversations. It's just like uh, he's had events that show up where it just like that signify and relate to him like, oh, my God. And he shares them with me. And uh, I, I did copy a lot of his uh, journals. I said, you should put a book together about this, you know, yeah. um, because it was amazing dialogue that was going on. And so, yeah, that's a that's a whole bunch of a lot of different things there, guys. <laughs> so where does the uh, UFO extra, where, what's your opinion about the uh, um, signs, flying saucers and extraterrestrials? Any and, sightings yourself? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if they're f f external or are they multidimensional or uh, what, what, or they're uh, inner earth kind of stuff. I yeah. mean, I, I remember pe Behold a Pale Horse. I remember that guy, uh, you know, that book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, I, I think that we come f from like from uh from star people uh ultimately and that um, our history has been obliterated uh, we have today with the censoring of the internet and all this stuff who knows what's real and especially now moving into ai who the fuck's going to know what's real going forward yeah. and i think there's a, a whitewashing of history and there's stuff that's hidden from us that would explain our connection to to other uh, our ancestry, yeah. which has been denied. So I do think they exist. I've I've heard there's bases being built out behind some planets here and channeled information. I mean, I got a near to the ground on everything, so I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. But yeah, as to what is real and not real, I, I couldn't say. Yeah. You know, other than I know that there's more to the than we understand. Have you heard anything about the dark side of the moon? Any structures? Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. And then also out behind Jupiter or somewhere, there's a there's this multinational base out there with uh, Italy and China doesn't want to be a part of it. I heard. <laughs> oh like, wow! They, they didn't want to. There was an alliance created, a treaty or some sort, and the, but China wants to do its own thing. But Europe and the U.S. are involved, and uh, there's people. Our people are up there. There's tech technology exchanges uh, some store some sources said that some of the stuff that we're looking at now in technology was exchanged for some of the uh, deals they've made like uh, some of this ai stuff that we're now tapped into is is really a gift from right. um, extra the, nhi yeah yeah the latest info from ufo land is that you know we're building underground bases to try to escape some event that's going to happen in the future and who knows when but we're building these oh, yeah. things it's either an attack from one of these you know there's allegedly there's more than one yes yeah you, yeah. Know, you know i don't want to say alien you know non-hit non-human intelligence of some kind but yeah it's you know so we're gonna not all of us you know those in this podcast probably won't be one of those be able to go to those <laughs> You know, we're just going to have to be on the surface. But there's another thing. It might be a solar. It might be an anticipation of a solar event. Flare, like, yeah, you know. something like that. Yeah. We, well, you know, there's a book I read. A while, I picked it up by accident. A novel it was about similar to what you're talking about. And this guy, this old man, try goes up and pulls a gun on the president with no weapon, no bullets in it, a, f a faked attempt to assassinate him. So the reason he did that was because he realized that uh, this earth shift was going to happen, uh, that the access was going to roll over. Could have been one of those things that you're talking yeah. about, too, the wobble, what have you. Yeah. That, that, so he got the attention to be able to get the president's ear, and they finally believed him. Cause, and the book goes through Vilikovsky's uh, Worlds in Collision theories about how – you know, uh, the elephant b graveyards in India were really like massive tidal waves that slammed up against the continent at, when an earth change happened before. Oh, wow. That certain sightings like the the Moses and the Chinese, that what the they saw the pillar of light and fire and by Moses was to appear to the Chinese as a dragon. So there's all these correlations. So finally the president buys into this and then the international community gets together and they start building an underground base preparing for this earth change oh, wow. that was coming and putting seeds and all that. So yeah, it, I, I, and that fascinated me then. I even contacted the author years later to see if I can get the movie rights to that story. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Which somebody in England already got. So I said, okay, but cause it, it grabbed me. I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of uh, interesting. I could see that, you know, 
So, yeah, I believe that's possible, too. Like the Hopis, they have that whole mythology about going underground and surviving the first world destruction, the second world destruction and all that. Yeah. Um, the ant people, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I yeah. we got. Some, I mean, we're living in some fun times. My 98-year-old <laughs> guy goes, he goes, look, you know, I used to look at people that held signs up saying the end is near. I thought they were nuts. He goes, now I'm yeah. not so sure. Yeah, <laughs> right. They might yeah. be right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The geo right now, the geopolitical arena is really in. I mean, they're talking about Iran's going to take some pretty drastic. I don't know if you follow the news, but Iran's going to take some drastic measures against Israel, and they're threatening some really serious war as we move more, you know, military assets into the area to further yeah. further throw fuel on the fire. Well, think yeah. about uh, think about Nostradamus for a minute. Yeah. When he, his predictions about you know what seemed to be uh, maybe a strike on Europe, you know, for, by a nuclear weapon or something like that. Uh, he, you know, I don't. I think we're in some interesting period of time where uh, you know even the Christians uh, with the philosophy of the the, the uh, what do you call it Armageddon. Yeah, and the two hundred thousand souls swept up while the rest of the world goes into chaos, yeah. lines itself with your people trying to build underground uh, yeah. sh shelters to survive an upcoming cataclysm. You know, it's all like coming together in, in a very and and I've always felt this. I, honest to God, since I was seven, a teenager and I was searching, looking for spirituality, I felt we were living in some precious precious times, and that this that I may see some of these things happen in my lifetime. Right. So. And that's what, as an 18 year old, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I've been living it, you know, and watching it happen and I could see it, but my friends are all swept up in this politics now and I'm going, yeah. you know, and there's some of them are really like, yeah, that's really <laughs> like progressive. They're really the code pink and, and I, and, yeah. and they're very active all yeah. of them. And I, and I go like, you know what? I said, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And yeah. it happens every four years yeah. and, and this world is going to change. But what we need to do is just get get in touch with ourselves, man. Yeah. We can't be distracted by all this nonsense that's going on around us because it's robbing us and it's dividing us and yeah. keeping us separate from what's really going on. Right. And and the only change that can really happen is within yourself. So. And then you can, when that happens, it, it's exponential, you know, and it, and it affects everybody else. But this hysteria, this madness, this this divis divisiveness, I think it's all part of this this part of this play and maybe there's ets involved in that yeah don't know you know what i mean because it the distraction works that all these devices that we have now that take us away from being pre i remember when you had to be home to get a phone call you know yeah I mean? yeah you know oh, there yeah, wasn't oh, yeah. an answering machine you know That's you right. had to actually yeah. be there and now if you don't respond to a text you're yeah. you're vilified you know, <laughs> yeah. you're, well, how many you know and so the distraction is constant, That's and, true. and it, it takes us away from where we are and the yeah. and the perspective we need to have about who we are and where we are. When I had cancer, the one thing that my mantra at the time that I developed was, I was reading this book by this chief, uh, Chief Golden Light Eagle. He wrote a, a book called, uh, I have it here, it's a great book. Yeah, hang on a second. Yeah. Wow. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. That perfectly. I, I don't know what it yeah. says, though. Maka and, Wikapi. It, Maka Wikapi Wikohan. And he channeled this whole thing. And then here's the, can you read that page there? It's the there you go. You star, it. the manual for the galactic. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. How long because the Native been? Americans were all tied into the extraterrestrial. Yep. So this book I read while I had cancer. And so it, it was beautiful for me. And it just opened me up. And then I'd sit in the garden and I'd look at the trees. I'd look at an, a squirrel or something. And I'd go, you know yeah. what? I'm a miracle surrounded by a miracle. Right. What's my problem? Whatever this disease is, this discord is happening in my body, is that a whack with all that is? And all I have to do is remember that I'm a part of this stronger force field presence yeah. vibration that if i instead of buying into fear and doubt and uh, this limited structure that was trying to grab my attention right. I, I i embraced what i'm a part of and right. that i think 
plus inviting people to focus on that when I had major work being done to hold that intention for me, right. plus the science, whatever, all of that came together to create a perfect storm that I could sit here today and talk to you. That's right. Yeah. It's, are, are, what should I say this? Your friends, are, are they aligned with one side or another of the political... A lot, a lot of my friends are uh, actually very liberal democratic. Yeah. So they just have a lot of hate in their heart for uh, anything that isn't that. Yeah. Which is right. Shocking. I, I just, I, and I, and I, for me, I'm, I'm a kind of an independent. You know. So I've never yeah, really. I've just did that. I just, I'm using common sense in terms of how my reaction to things, and I'm not assuaged by, same. by uh, yeah. the, the, the drumbeat of hysteria yeah. either on either side on of either the side. Point. Yeah. 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 Uh but I think what's really weird is I had a really close girlfriend one time we were sitting at a table and I've known her for 40 years and at one point because I've I've been talking about some of these issues way before there was a Donald Trump or or you know and I, and I, those were concerns of mine I said how can our country support ed with the education and the healthcare system and the all this people coming in without with it just can't do it. I says there's no way to support the infrastructure can't Hold it up. Right. But I think that we needed to have some kind of understanding or fix about that or system, immigration system. Uh, they call me a racist because I thought that. Oh, they, they, and, and so I have an education. Of course and they it's did. gotten worse. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and that's just, and that's got worse. So this girlfriend of mine, I'm sitting at a table with her about a year ago, oh. and she goes to me, you know, I don't know if we can be friends anymore. Oh, <laughs> wow. What? Because of my. And I start, You're... tears started rolling down my face because yeah. I was like, this is my best. One of my best friends. I'm going yeah. like, I can't believe this is this is happening. I mean, this is a temporal. This is temp so temporal that family. And I've watched families get torn apart by this this craziness. It's ridiculous. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the media that we have. These yes. hand yeah. devices, yes. these computers, and then the manipulation of what appears to be. Uh, and I, I miss may make me sound like a coop, but mainstream media. They use the same words in their yeah. reporting. It's yeah. like it's like it's orchestrated. They're reading from the same script, and yep. it's yeah, if you probably. if you step back and look at it for a minute, I think yeah, common sense will tell you that th this something not right here. You know what I mean? So I don't know, but again, back to my spiritual roots, I know that all I can do, the best I can do, is be the best I can be, Focus. and that allow and whatever's going to happen. And the grace in my life has shown me. That if I let go and surrender, I float. I get carried to where I need to be. Yeah. And whatever's happening in this world, we're going to wind up there one way or another, right. regardless of our hysteria and madness. Uh, and maybe, maybe because of it. I mean, I mean, we almost lost uh, a former president of the United States because of some because of this mad Crazy. conversation that's going on out there. Yeah. This hatred. Yeah, that, my, I'm kind of living in a house divided. We're on both different sides of the coin. It's interesting with my wife. We have very differing views, and yet we can still get along and discuss, you know, without, you know, if you're on a certain side, I'm not going to talk about which side I'm on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all very careful. <laughs> you know, but we're not going to no do politics. politics. <laughs> um, yeah, but politics. It's, I'm very calm about discussing the issues and what the issues have been over the last exactly. four years. Yeah. And the other side gets enraged. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> right. I don't yeah. understand why the emotion, you know, it's yeah. very interesting because it's like, why are you getting upset about it? You know? No, it's true. You can't, you, 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 people start shouting. People yeah. start, yeah. Uh, right. and then, and then they, or they want to cut you off or like, I, I want nothing to do with you. And on Facebook, for example, I have a lot of friends, like I said, because of my community and traveling and people I've worked with over the years. So, you're looking at some of the posts and dialogues that are going on and it's just like i try to avoid commenting at all on any of it because i Same. again it's not it's really not where it needs to be but also i don't want to no. oh, have is, um... lose my friends yeah because i have an opinion <laughs> you know what right. i mean yeah oh yeah and yeah, so I, I, I just kept my lid on it and, and i always post something you know or i'll point something out like you know but you know, well, you know, you guys, I, I think you you know better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Like, you know, but it, it's just it's, it's amazing. It, it, yeah, it, just, it's I'm, a crazy I'm a, time. I'm a know? manager, and I've got a saying: just because you're loud doesn't mean it makes you right. No, you know, <laughs> it makes you proud, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're proud. Yeah, loud and proud. You know, loud and proud. <laughs> 
So how come you didn't stay in? I mean, you staying in acting, or you you're, uh, you're well sad because of, well because of the cancer. Uh, it did work a little bit through cancer. Then when COVID came, uh, everything was different. Uh, right. And and uh, but during <clears> COVID. <throat> Or just prior to COVID, I started doing screenwritings. I took some screenwriting workshops, and I was working on three different scripts. Uh, one of them, which was very funny, uh, just before COVID hit, I had this global uh, scenario where uh, Ebola was being used by terrorists. Earth changes had started to happen uh, around the world, uh, and people started to migrate in mass. And our border was, um, people were pouring across our border because of this earth change thing. And these terrorists were now going to smuggle some Ebola people from Africa in through the border and try to, so I was had this whole story going in the CDC, I had a colonel in the CDC in my characters, and I showed it to one of my neighbors who said, oh, you know, this is, per I love this script. He goes, but you know. Uh, but you know who should do this? He goes, I've got friends in the Chinese film market. He goes, you need to put China in here. He's Oh. oh, wow. Of, that's what he's that was like two months, two, three months before this whole COVID thing happened. Oh, wow. And uh, and then after yeah. that, it happened. I said, okay, that scripts. I got to show it. It's no good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been it's, done. It, um, yeah, for real. <laughs> it's been done for real now. Uh, then I have another script I was working on called The Greatest Story Never Told. And it was uh, about Jesus and uh, how uh, he survives his crucifixion through the uh through the tunnel that nicodemus had that went from his house to the crypt that jesus was found in and then it picks up the story of where jesus travels uh to india and other places stuff that i got from reading a book when i was 20 called the aquarian gospel right. of jesus i don't know if you've ever seen it uh, pretty amazing it. Ch another channeled book from a an abolitionist in the 1860s oh. and he channels this whole thing and it talks about the mystery years when jesus was a teenager to when he em emerges as a 30 year old oh. and that's where he talks about him traveling to all the mystery schools right. it doesn't talk about him after the crucifixion but i'm taking that part of the story where he does the mystery schools and in fact, in India, there's there's stories about a guy called Isu that you, that appeared in India after in the time of Christ, which was a, a great um, healer and uh, person. So the story would and so it has one scene is after the uh, temple uh, where he turns over the temples tables. He's there with Judas and Mary in the in the kitchen, sitting there, and and Judas goes, "Man, you should have been there. It was off the hook." Jesus turns the table. <laughs> so it's just a whole different. <laughs> look of what was going on and how there was political and how they were radical and yeah. some of the people that were with him were political and radical and and what was happening uh that's a script that's this on the sh in development nice um, sounds good but covid came because. and then everything stopped <laughs> uh basically the script meetings went and then the lawsuit began with this guy and i've been so occupied with trying to defend myself and help him uh, and I've become a, a be, from the cancer. I almost became a doctor. From the lawsuit, I've almost become a lawyer. You right. know, I've just I've read all this stuff. Yeah. I've had a you know cool. really like a, a, offering information back to his attorneys because I'm so uh, on top of everything. But uh, like I told Arnold, I have a lot of skill sets that came to your aid that you did you weren't aware of that I because I, I I basically did a lot of things that gave me ability to use the internet to research, you know, and um, put two and two together. That's awesome. Are you religious? Do you, get, do you go to church or read the Bible? Uh, no, but I, I kind of meditate, you know. I, 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 I'm religious so cool. in that uh, nature. Uh, I'm, I, like I said, I'm a miracle surrounded by a miracle. My religion is gratitude. My religion mm -hmm. is recognizing the gift that I have, the opportunity that I have to try to see beyond uh, the personalities and beliefs of others and recognize the similarities that we share in that we have this opportunity to just feel joy and peace. And this is our little window, you know, the brackets of birth and death that we have and that little window of, of experiential reality. And a lot of that is, okay, relationships, it's drugs, it's, it's sex, whatever it is, that relation, but it's all experiential. That's that's what being a human being is. Yeah. So there is an experience that is a human being, which is what human means, like higher person, the higher intelligence that we can connect with. That's been talked about in all the 
various scriptures about this connection that's available that exists, that the kingdom of heaven is within you, that it's not something external, that we carry it with us in consciousness is is waiting to be it's like a waiting to be oh it's like if you it's like the power of attraction they talk about you focus on something it happens if you look my name my i'll give you an example my roommate i go out in the alley every now and then and i find incredible stuff furniture and stuff and he and he says i've lived here 60 years i never find anything so i just go out there look at so let's see what's out there today and because i'm looking because yeah. i'm looking you there's something there so yep. your eyes you are look, open if you look you can find you so find. seeking out that gratitude, looking for that uh, internal connection that you are, and and feeling the joy that's that is experiential. That is what being a human being is all about. I that's my religion. Yeah, you know, if I put it down, I was raised Catholic. I like that. You know, but when I read the Bible, my family said, "Oh, you can't read the Bible." I said, "Why not?" I said, "They said because you're Catholic, the Church interprets it." And I said, "Well, look." If I should die and go to heaven and St. Peter meets me at the gate and he goes, well, did you read the book? <laughs> You'd know what was going on if you read the book. <laughs> right, at least I read the book. I mean, you know, come on, that's, that's the first question. Right? <laughs> awesome. Is there anything we, anything else we need? I know there's a lot, probably a lot more, but uh, anything else we need to know about Johnny? <laughs> oh, yeah, one other thing, maybe. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh -oh. Hang on. All right. If I can find it, it is here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a sign. We'll be back in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. I'm sorry. This is part of the program. This yeah, this, is, is, this, okay. this never right. happens. This, this yeah. never happens. <laughs> okay. That's a all lie. Right. I'm sorry. You're not supposed to walk off camera. I know. No. I just did to grab my yeah, tablet. Yeah, both so of you, you did. Do okay. This is something that I created with my partner back in Maui during the solar eclipse back way back when. And it is a oh, oh wow. astrological three-dimensional chart. Oh, wow. That is cool. So it's got all the signs, all the degrees. Uh, this is an aspect finder. You point it at one of your planets, and right. whatever lines up on the points is an aspect, an opposition, a square, or a trine. Oh. And I created this because I've always been fascinated by these things, and I, didn't, I couldn't access the information. So I always talk to a lot of astrologers and people like that. So this allows you to go right to the books without having another person. It's called a personal astrologer. Right. And so uh, with that came um, pieces, for example, to give you an idea. Are you selling that? Or are you, is that just yeah, yeah, we're selling that. Oh. So uh, this is the, so each piece goes on the board, Mercury, right. Sun. So it stands in these holes. Oh, that's cool. Like that. Okay, right. flat. Right. All right. And then there's a second ring that you could put other planets in, which come in a different color. Right. So you could do two charts at once. You can uh, do aspects to your natal chart uh, and open up uh, a, a window of possibility. That's at my website, personalastrologer.com. Personal and there's astrology. readings on that. So you can click on all the links. You can get readings for transits or natal, all free. Um, and the board, I think, sells for about 60 bucks online. What was the website again? Personalastrologer.com. And then what's your website? My website. Which website do I have? Well, I have uh, one. Planetary. Well, that's one of them. Okay. Uh, the other one is planetaryvisions.tv, which is basically just a, a video production site. Uh, I've got, a, I've, I've got a occupynow.org, which I haven't built yet. Um, but uh, I would say I, I'm not really I'm not really doing much. On, I have my YouTube channel, which I put things up as I done them. Yes. I haven't done anything really much there uh, lately. But um, okay. like the, the uh, one of the things on the YouTube channel, though, is the chief, the chief, I was the chief Golden Light Eagle from the book uh, that I showed you. OK, there's I, what I did with this is I took some of the chapters 
and I uh, I made a video using fractals that another friend gave me, and I did um, I read the chapter of the channel, and then I put a, 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 a drum beat behind it, like and some chanting. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I had this fractal images as I'm reading. Hi, I'm Lightning Clown from da 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 da. Uh, beautiful stuff. So if you want it, it's it's interesting stuff. It's on the uh, YouTube. You said. I have Planetary Visions TV. Yeah. Is my YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. All right. And there's a lot of interviews and content up there. But one of them, you'll see these fractals. Three, th maybe three or four fractal films I put up with different chapters from this book awesome. that yeah. I found uh, just an experiment I was doing. <laughs> thank you. Very nice. Yes. Thank you. Well, thanks. We're gonna I did able... stand up. Oh, I did stand up comedy for. Oh a while. yeah, wait, I did see. The... Yeah, tell us about I that. Did... I did the Vijani monologues. The Vijani, the Vijani <laughs> monologues. <laughs> you did know, you, so like, did for you example, do them dressed uh, as a man or a woman? I was. Uh, this is when I was in femme. So right, I, right, I was right. doing. When I did that, I I did a number of projects at the center. I was a featured in. A, I did a music video called Vertigo. A band friend, some friends in a band contacted me and said, "We'd like you to be in this video we're doing," and I said, uh, "Okay." Uh, so I thought it was just a walk-on thing. Uh, but it turned out I was the whole source of the video. Oh, sure. And, uh, awesome. It's about a guy who's dressed straight, he comes home with his attache case and starts like that. And then he comes into his house and you can see stressing. And then he starts unwinding and he starts cross dressing. Right. And then you see this guy liberated and feeling free. So that was the whole video, but it was, it was to their song called Vertigo. Nice. And, uh, it was, it was, I was surprised that I was featured, but that was good. Then I was featured in a, uh, a photo gallery at the center where they did this a photo exhibit. Uh, and then um, I did this comedy workshop. So I did a graduation. You go to the L.A. comedy store and you graduate. So during the process, you write. I never wrote jokes. I was more of a uh, spontaneous kind of person. Yeah. I learned how to write Definitely. jokes based on my experience. And when I uh, and you do it with these other people that are trying to be comedians and even in open mics with other comedians, you sit there, you're doing your material, and it's quiet. You can hear crickets. Yeah. You hear, ah, uh, yeah. And mostly, most comics are in their mind thinking about, that was good, damn it. Or like, wow, I, what, you know, they're not really responding. Right. So the very first time I went up on stage at the comedy store and I did my routine, everything landed. It was really amazing. Nice. Just the response. It was just like, wow, to have that. And then I did that twice. Um, like one of the things I talked about was like what I told you about showing up in the pronoun thing. And, you know, suddenly my life went where I felt profound freedom before I walked in there. Suddenly my life is now pigeonhole categorized and labeled and I had to become something to be accepted yeah. where I accepted myself originally yeah. for what I was, how I unburdened. Now I had to fit into your concept of who and what I am, which was kind of strange to me. <clears throat> or when you know, I was like, you know, when I was a guy at mode, I had like maybe four pairs of shoes, some tennis shoes and maybe a pair of dress shoes, <laughs> right. and, you know, flip flops, whatever. But as a feminine person, I had sandals, boots, Everything. heels. <laughs> All but, you sassy. know, I had, and the thing that drove me crazy was I wanted more. What the fuck is that all about? <laughs> How that happen? <laughs> Need the accessories. <laughs> right, accessorizing. So I, you know, went from Ross dress for less to Ross cross dress. <laughs> <laughs> and then I always wondered, you know, for a long time before I ever came out, I see, you know, people standing around, women like this, yeah. and even gay men. It's like an effeminate gesture. Right. So, and I thought, oh, you know, then I realized, you know, that's not an effeminate. You know what that is? Because, you know, okay, before I get there, I, when I start wearing women's clothes, right. there's no pockets ever. Right. And if there are pockets, they're That's fake they little have to pockets. Do that. Right. Yeah, to there are tiny hand. little pockets that are on fire. So this, I found out, really what that is, is because they got no fucking pockets. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so that's the bit of the comedy thing. I stopped that too because of COVID. All of it came because nobody was meeting, nobody was gathering. Hopefully, when the sports back. stuff subsides, I I will get back to you, some of that. You got to bring that back. That was hilarious. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap it up, Johnny. Yes, thank you. So You're much. awesome. That was a great story. Thank um, you. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of the Alien Probe Podcast. We welcome comments, questions, or requests to alienprobepodcast at gmail dot com. Visit us on Facebook. Check out our website, alienprobe.net, Twitter, and Instagram at Alien Probe Pod. 
YouTube at Alien Probe Podcast and also Rumble, preferably at Alien Probe Podcast. So uh, we don't get a banner because we talked about COVID. Um, <laughs> thank you, Matt. And of course, Johnny, that was awesome. Yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. You're welcome back anytime, sir. Namaste, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs>